If you are having difficulty in laying on tactician difficulty, here are some tips for you to consider to make your combat easier. Don't get me wrong, I feel that combat in tactician mode is easy compared with other games. But if you did everything wrong, then it will become difficult for you. Hello guys, Genuine here from Genuine Gaming. And here are my top 10 combat tips in tactician difficulty in Baldur's Gate 3. I'm ranking these tips under their importance. So let's start with number 10, save. Yes, saving your game regularly is important outside of combat. But I just discovered recently that you can do a save during combat which is nice. If you do not think that you are about to enter a difficult combat and you are not able to make a save, fear not of losing a lot of game time as you can save the game anytime during combat. Build your character correctly. One of the main reasons that you are not hitting things is that your character is not optimized. In tactician difficulty, you do not need an overpowered build or a minimum maximum character. All you need is a character that is built properly. Like you do not create a wizard with 14 and below intelligence stat as it would make your wizard spells not hit with anything. At least make your attack roll stat reach at least 18 points and if you can keep it up to 20, which is the maximum if you use ability score increase feat. The reason many complain is that Shadow Heart, if not respect, could not hit anything as her character is not optimized. She has 13 strength, 13 dexterity, 14 constitution, 10 intelligence, 17 wisdom, and 8 charisma. She has sacred flame that does not require an attack roll but a saving throw by an enemy. If his dexterity save is high then it will be difficult to hit that enemy. She also has a fire bolt but that spell has intelligence for its modifier because it is connected by being shadow heart as a high half elf. Since her intelligence is 10, she would not have any bonus with attack roll if she used firebolt. Her strength and dexterity is only 13 which is suboptimal. She only gains a plus 1 bonus for her melee and range attacks. That is why I would recommend to respect her immediately once Withers is present in your camp. Number 8. Ritual Spells Ritual spells in Baldur's Gate 3 allow the caster to cast magic without using a spell slot as long as you cast it outside of combat. Some of these spells are very useful in combat like Long Strider and Enhanced Leap. Before entering into combat, cast these spells to buff your character without spending a spell slot. I like to cast Long Strider every after I make a long rest as this spell would last up to your next long rest. Jump triples your jumping distance for 10 turns and Long Strider increases your movement speed by 3 meters. Both of these spells make you pretty mobile during combat. Number 7. Position your companions while you are in dialogue. Good character positioning gives you an advantage during combat. Higher places give you at least 10% increase in your attack roll. You can take advantage of this during dialogue. As one of your party members is locked during dialogue, the other members of your party can move around to better position themselves in preparation for combat. Number 6. Jump, Shove, Dash, and Disengage these four things can be a lifesaver during combat which is why you better not sleep on these abilities. Jump is a very useful bonus action to close out distances as you can cover more ground if you use this ability. Shove is another bonus action that can be used to wake up sleeping companions or to push enemies into chasms killing them immediately in combat. You must pass an athletics check for the shove to succeed. Dash is an action that doubles your movement speed. Disengage is also an action that allows you to move away from the enemy without provoking attacks of opportunity. Number 5. Bless Bless is a level 1 cleric spell. Although it is only a level 1 spell, it is an overpowered spell. It can bless up to 3 creatures. Blessed creatures gain a plus 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. Upcasting this spell would allow you to bless more than 3 creatures and additional 1 creature is added per level it is upcast. Cast this spell at the start of combat or better before a combat to save up some actions for your caster. Since this is a concentration spell, be careful not to cast another concentration spell or else your blessed spell is cancelled. 
Another thing to note, don't let your caster get hit as it would require your caster to roll a constitution saving throw to maintain their concentration on the blessed spell. Failure to pass the constitution saving throw would cancel the spell. That is why casters should have a high constitution score for more bonuses on their constitution saving throw. One good tip I can give you for protecting your caster is to cast Sanctuary so that enemies cannot make the caster as a target as long as they do not attack. Number 4. Focus Attack I have mentioned this in my other video that you should avoid spreading your attack to different enemies. One combat strategy in a turn-based RPG is called Focus Attack. That would mean you focus all your attacks on a certain enemy before moving to a different enemy. The main idea of this strategy is to dwindle enemy numbers so that they also have fewer units to be able to attack you. The fewer the enemies, the fewer the attacks against you. Generally, you start killing off weak enemies and you move up to a more difficult enemy. You should avoid spreading your attacks to different enemies as that would not immediately kill an enemy in a round. An enemy with 1 HP can still make an attack and possibly hit or even kill a member of your party. Number 3. Use your weapon skills Make it a habit to use the skills that come with your weapon as most of them will replenish after a short rest. This was one of my mistakes in the early playthrough as I would save them for harder fights. In the end, I wasted these abilities. Piercing Strike and Lacerate are a few of those skills that can help you in your damage output during combat. Use them as often as you can as they can become game changers during combat. Anyway, most of these abilities would be available after a short rest. Number 2. Utilize your bonus action As much as possible, always use your bonus action every turn. Use it to attack an enemy, cast a spell, coat your weapon with oil, or drink a potion. Veterans would build their characters so that they can make use of their bonus action. Usually, a fighter who uses two-handed weapons has a few options for their bonus action except to use oil, shove some enemies, jump, or drink a potion. But by giving them the great weapon Master Feet, they can now use their bonus action to attack if they can take down an enemy or if they can make a critical hit. Number 1. Potions, Oils, and Elixirs Don't sleep on your potions, oil, and especially on your elixirs. These things can change the tides of battle in your favor. Drinking a potion of speed can give 3 turns of haste effects without worry about getting cancelled. Most oils can last up to 10 turns, and these oils can poison enemies, overcome enemies' resistance, and can even increase your attack rolls. Elixirs are the best among these three as they can last up to your next long rest. My favorite is Elixir of Cloud Giant Strength as it can give you a whopping 27 strength until your next long rest. Another notable elixir in the list is Elixir of Heroism as it can give you 10 temporary hit points and most importantly become blessed meaning you gain a 1d4 bonus in your attack roll and saving throw. So those are my top 10 combat tips for Tactician Mode in Baldur's Gate 3. What tips do you want to give to other players? Feel free to put them in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like if this video is helpful. And for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Ciao!